I think like I mean it would be released, but I I mean I don't know. Um, that that might happen. He can strike that channel all day, every day. Okay. Don't do it. I think you would like his takes on Metal Gear. Yes, I will probably. He's a, he's like a leftist, right? Hideo Kojima is gaming's most prominent auteur. The creator of the Metal Gear franchise, his games have constantly made us reimagine what is truly possible with this young medium. Metal Gear Solid on the PS1 and Metal Gear Solid Sons of the Patriots on PS2 were both revolutionary in their respective eras and True. really pushed the boundaries of cinematic storytelling and Absolutely. gameplay innovations. Absolutely. Metal Gear Solid 3 is widely considered his masterpiece, with many considering it the greatest game of all time. Follow-ups like Metal Gear Solid 4, Peace Walker, and The Phantom Pain have all brought their own technical and narrative innovations. Kojima's wild popularity may be surprising considering his games are so political. Under the bombast, under the outlandishness, under the convoluted and complex storylines lies some powerful political messages. Kojima constantly tackles and challenges the audience by discussing some of the most controversial issues of our time. There is also a lot of anti-Western sentiment in his games, as well as criticisms against historic Western colonialism. The reason why I love Hideo Kojima is exactly that, because he, much like myself, is very, is very critical of Western development, colonialism, imperialism, war as an industry, but also simultaneously is a massive fucking Westaboo, just like me. I love the aesthetics. I love the cultural product. I love the output. Okay, but also, I, I am a huge Amerabu and absolutely fucking love criticizing America. Huge message found in his games is Kojima's anti-nuclear weapon stance. An actual Metal Gear is a bipedal tank that can launch a nuke after all, and this is not surprising given Kojima's upbringing in Japan, the only country to be attacked with nuclear weapons by another country. From messages of the meaningless of borders, to attacking Obama for not shutting down Guantanamo Bay, Kojima's politics are clearly left wing. The, the often reclusive man has never expressed these views in an interview, but his work speaks for itself. It's ironic that he is loved by the gaming community, who are often so against political messages, especially coming from the left. Hideo Kojima was born on August 24th, 1963 in Tokyo and moved to Osaka when he was four. His family would watch a movie every single night and he wasn't allowed to go to sleep until the movie was over. It explains how he became such a cinephile. The character of paramedic in Metal Gear Solid 3 has an extensive knowledge of 1950s and 1960s film, which are probably derived from Kojima's early years as a film lover. Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla King of Monsters? Snake, have you ever seen for a fistful of dollars? Snake, do you know the creature from the Black Lagoon? Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? Snake, have you ever seen The War of the Worlds? Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia With Love? <laughs> I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Oh my god. Is David Hayter's voice different than I in imagine it in my mind? Or is it because this is like early, uh, some of his earlier work? It sounds, it, it's, I remember it a little bit butterier. Otacon. Nah, man, you delusional. It seems a little bit, it seems a little bit cheesier. Maybe, oh, no. Oh, no. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets, the cars, the guns? When he was 13 years old, his father passed away, giving him an early experience of dealing with death. With his mum away at work, his teens were often lonely, and music and movies were his main means of escape. Dude. Could you my man was also my man was also handsome from the jump. You know what I'm saying? Kojima always wanted to enter the creative field, but his- No, David Hayter is bad. Going Kiefer Sutherland makes it stand out more. Absolutely fucking lootly not. David Hayter is the goddamn goat. How fucking dare you? His voice was incredible. The fact that they swapped it out on him 
and went with Kiefer Sutherland was a gigantic fuck you to the fan base. And technically, that was done by Kojima himself, by the way. Probably one of his only bad decisions. That's crazy. David Hayter is iconic. His uncle's financial struggles as a writer put him off. The relative poverty of the family due to his father's death was also another reason. So he went to university to study economics and wrote stories on the side, which he could not get published. He also attempted making short movies with his friends. It was during his time at university where he started playing video games regularly on Nintendo's- I love when Americans cope and say, oh, it's not fucking voiced by him because it's not the real snake. Oh, yeah? Is that why the same fucking voice actor in the Japanese version voices the same uh, character regardless? Is that why? Huh? Is that why it didn't change? The Japanese VO didn't change, but the English one did? Is that why? Or maybe it's because Kajimbo maybe is a little bit too much of a simp of American cinema and television and really liked Kiefer Sutherland and chose this as an opportunity to work with him. And I think that he shouldn't have done that, but it's fine. Super Famicom, known to the West as the Nintendo Entertainment System or the NES. Kojima himself says the original Super Mario Bros was a major inspiration for him to get involved in the games industry. But Kojima did not get to make Nintendo games when he entered the industry, instead making titles for underpowered home computers. His gaming career began at the birth of mainstream video games as we know it, and being in his 20s in the 1980s had a lasting impression as things like David Bowie, Blade Runner and Escape from New York infiltrated his work. In fact, one of his first non-Metal Gear games for Konami was Snatcher, a cyberpunk game heavily influenced by Blade Runner, Akira and The Terminator, which focuses on humanoid robots replacing humans in society. By the way, I can't believe I, I forgot to fucking run the three minute ad break after I debated you guys. I'm doing it now. Fuck. Classic. In Neo Kobe City in Japan, 50 years into the future. Before Snatcher, Kojima took over the production of a game called Metal Gear that had not a lot of hope internally at Konami, especially due to the MSX computer's hardware. Kojima worked around its limits by basing the game on the movie The Great Escape and focused it on a lone soldier who used stealth to infiltrate a base, one of the very first stealth focus games to be created. He would follow Metal Gear up with its sequel, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. This in Splinter Cell also is quite literally the only, the original Splinter Cell are probably some of the only good stealth games that have come out. Like people will say Thief or all these other uh, games, but like I, I honestly, I honestly don't, I don't know. I, I feel like it maybe maybe because I was like young when I played them, but I truly do believe that I truly believe that this and the OG Splinter Cell are just like two of the greatest stealth games of all time. Snake. After I didn't play, I didn't play Deus Ex. To cinema in the Metal Gear games and Snatcher, he made Police Noughts. Similar to Snatcher, it was a graphic novel type adventure game, but this time based on Hollywood's buddy cop films like Lethal Weapon. All these games would go on to become cult classics, but none were wildly successful. However, Kojima's creativity would manifest itself into critical and commercial success with 1998's Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation 1. Widely considered one of the best games of all time, its mixture of cinematic storytelling, revolutionary gameplay and graphics made it stand out during the era. Its follow-up, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, only enhanced Kojima's record. I would... I would do unspeakable things for an MGS1, MGS2 remake, remaster, like, full-blown. Just, like, I know I talk about, like, uh, remasters, blah, 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 it sucks, but my position on it has changed now because there's just, like, nothing coming out.
But a remake, dude? Not a remaster, a remake. Oh my god. Reputation. The games made him a household name and made the Metal Gear games cultural landmarks. However, under the games pushing the boundaries of storytelling, visuals, and gameplay was the inherently- They remade MGS1 already on GameCube? Yeah, no, that doesn't count. I'm talking like with today's- political nature of the series coming through. Kojima's politics have become part of the fabric of the Metal Gear games, and this is why perhaps people don't realize how outspoken he is. Due to the sheer amount of political issues in Kojima's work, I will focus my attention on just a few of his games. I feel the big boss games are the best to dissect. The Solid Snake games are far more convoluted in nature and with what they are trying to say. That isn't to say they don't have some valuable political messages in themselves. The anti-nuclear weapons message remains prominent while MGS2 is far ahead of its time tackling the age of disinformation the internet would bring. I was a North American fall webworm in my past life. Oh, those were the good old days. What were you and your- Oh my god, don't let the fucking Matrix Andes find out about Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh my god, the Lolly Lule Low. Imagine like an Andrew Tate wannabe type just like completely bastardizing the Lolly Lule Low and like the Sons of the Patriots. Oh my fucking lord, dude. No. No. They already did the Matrix thing, okay? Oh my fucking god, dude. They'd be like- Oh, yeah, yeah. And MGS4 gives an interesting perspective on the war economy and the future of the military industrial complex. This is, However, I believe. For the record, <laughs> Cyprus. Um, for the record, MGS4, like every single Kojima game has been. 100% correct on its predictions about the future. Every single one. The MGS games that take place in historical settings show Kojima's politics more clearly. I will primarily focus on Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, but will also include items from Snake Eater and The Phantom Pain. Why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. Yeah, Death Stranding if happening we're soon and happened already. Representation of Kojima's socialist COVID. politics. We need not look much further than the boss from Metal Gear Solid 3. She is the mentor of Jack, or as we know him, Snake or Big Boss. In the events of MGS3, the boss defects to the USSR, and you as a player are sent on a mission to kill her. In their final encounter, the boss tells Snake the reason why she defected. She said the world used to be whole. She also points out how politics constantly divides the human race into separate countries, which changes quickly throughout history. Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. I mean, that... Okay, maybe he wasn't super right about that. You know what I mean? Somehow I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. Is there- To be fair, to be fair, it's not Kojima's fault. It's just that America is, is not interesting enough to find new, new villains, you know what I mean? Such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy. There is no such thing and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. She wants the world to be made whole through the shadowy organization known as the Philosophers, a former group of the wealthiest people in China, Russia, and the USA. The boss's view that the human race should be united and not have borders was because she was the first woman in space. In the game's lore, she was also the first person in space, getting there before Yuri Gagarin of the Soviet Union. She saw the Earth from space for the first time, and this changed her perspective entirely. The dangerous mission failed, and the radiation she is exposed to scarred her for life, but she became concerned that space exploration would become another reason for meaningless competition, but the Earth itself did not have any boundaries, a world without communism or capitalism. In 1960, I saw a vision of the ideal future from space. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. 
That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the U.S. and the USSR. Also true. Politics, economics, the arms race. Literally correct. They're all just arenas for meaningless competition. I'm sure you can see that. But the Earth itself... The space race is 100,000% just another extension of defense uh, and another extension of weapons manufacturing in the war economy. So, again... At least political game, I know. I love gamers and how fucking stupid they are because they look to games like this and don't consider it to be inherently political when politics is all about this game. Like, it's 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 everything in this game. Uh, everything in this game is political. But, you know. Uh, they, as long as there's no, there's no woman character uh, as the main character then it's not political Delph has no boundaries no east no west no cold war and the irony of it is the united states and the soviet union are spending billions on their space programs and the missile race only to arrive at the same conclusion in the 21st century every to be fair a lot of gamers did hate metal gear solid 2 for riding which is pretty funny because like and then uh, Revengeance was, like, not well-received at all, I think, in its inception. And then only recently did it fucking blow up, at least in the Western world. They were all, I remember being like, oh, Raiden's gay, Raiden's gay. Which, by the way, Vamp literally canonically is bisexual. Um, and it was pretty funny because, like, then Raiden became a badass character. What do you mean? MGR was always loved? I don't think MGR was loved like that. I think MGR, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like, uh, it, and it might be, I might be personally biased, but I feel like MGR, when it first came out, didn't get the reception that it did on Metal Gear games. You're fucking insane. Wrong and out of touch. I'm out of touch. You think MGR was was even even mentioned alongside any of the Metal Gear Solid genre? No, it was niche. It had a very fucking it had a very niche audience. People that played it loved it, but overall, it 1000% was was like, "Oh, more ride in." Like, I can't believe it. Fucking MGR got uh, MGR was like Fight Club. Fight Club, originally, Fight Club, originally, when it came out, was a flop in the box office. It was quite literally a box office failure. Okay? Fight Club, only years later, uh, got the critical acclaim and the, the massive fan base uh, that it now has. Did you guys know that? I bet you didn't know that either. Motherfuckers hated Raiden until MGS4 and MGR didn't blow up until recently because it wasn't traditional Metal Gear. Exactly. <sighs> this is also new criticisms, though, for the record, and it doesn't even matter. Um, this has all of the reviews. This has new reviews as well. well. Let's see what the mixed reviews were. Was it true that Metal Gear Rising was hated that hard? This was from one year years one year ago. There were some heated arguments by some fans of the series where they found out that MGR had changed to be a hack and slash game. I was one of those who initially had a bad impression of the game. People were pissed about MGS2 because you got to play a snake and then were stuck as Raiden for the rest of the game. Yeah. Until recently, motherfucker, MGR is like a 10 year old game. What the fuck are you talking about, lol? Yes, MGR, when it first came out, was not seen if I. Okay. First of all, Metal Gear Solid 2, quite literally, 
was a, again a massive success, but the way it was marketed and uh, the 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 turn to Raiden was literally hidden until release. Okay, so when Metal Gear Solid Two came out, that bait and switch pissed off people to a degree that you cannot understand by today's standards because. Kojima never wanted to make Metal Gear Solid 3. He barely wanted to make Metal Gear Solid 2. People were threatening him with suicide. People would send him letters saying they're going to commit suicide if he doesn't make another fucking Metal Gear Solid. When Metal Gear Solid 2 first came out, it was insane. Everybody bought it. It was insane. Everybody fucking went out and bought it thinking that there was going to be a full-blown Solid Snake video game. At that point, Metal Gear Solid, the fan base was uh, the fan base was uh, was was built. They were rabid and everybody loved it. Everybody loved Solid Snake as a character. So when the game started off with Solid Snake, you're like, "Oh, this is familiar territory. I fucking love this shit." Oh, how wonderful. Oh, we're in an oil tanker. We're fighting Russians. It looks beautiful. It's beautifully drawn. And then, boom, all of a sudden, it flipped over to Raiden. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Especially because Raiden was a bit of a femboy on top of everything else. So that juxtaposition from Solid Snake, the rugged, like, manly man, escaped from New York, Kurt Russell, Solid Snake, to um, Snake Pliskin, to fucking Raiden, was a major swap that gamers fucking hated. Hated. Then, when Metal Gear Solid Revengeance came out in 2013, uh, it was a full-blown riding game. They fucking... They, and it wasn't even a, a sneaking game. It was a hack-and-slash game with really unique mechanics, by the way, which I think is really cool. Do you remember the original MGR with the watermelon-cutting tech demo? It left Kojima's hands out of that time and became a platinum game. I think everyone knew going in it wasn't a bamboozle like Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, don't listen to me. Listen to a fucking YouTube essayist so that you will... Uh, YouTube essayist that knows more about fucking video games in the eyes of this chat so that you will agree with it now. By the way, I do think it's because of memes. MGR made, uh, MGR got so many memes that it like in the last year, in the last two years or so, MGR got a complete resurgence. Literally. You being a massive Kajimbo head always makes me happy. You're about right about the meme, but also lack of access to old MGS games on modern platforms. Anyway, was this your doing? No, I, I would never take credit for this. This was like something that was collectively established. Anyway. Um... Where is the video? Okay, here it is. Everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism. That is the world I wanted to see. But tragedy of the boss is that she is constantly set up by America. They betrayed her and sent Snake to kill her. This leads Snake to leaving the US Special Forces and setting up his own private militia. Snake pledges himself to carry out the boss's vision for the future. This forms Snake's own worldview. Big Boss is another character that Kojima uses to show his socialist politics, and I would argue the game Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, originally for the PSP, shows this more explicitly than most. Yeah, I played Thank that as you, well. I mean, this made me really hard. Uh, this made me really unhappy. This made it hard to play, but the fucking cutscenes being comics. Call me Snake. Oh. Uh, sorry, Vic Boss. Listen up. 
for us, there is no victory. But in revolution, doesn't one triumph or die? We don't do either. The game picks up 10 years after Metal Gear Solid 3. It starts in Colombia. Snake has established his own private military company called... He predicted 9-11 and they had to change it. The assets of the original destruction of Manhattan here. Wait, I didn't even know that. What the fuck? Wait. No fucking shot. Wait, what? That's crazy. This is true. They changed almost all of the last half of the game because of 9-11. Bro. Dude, he's too good. He is literally too fucking good. He is Nostradamus. Kojimbo-san. Kojimbo. -san. Kojimbo. All right, let's continue. The militaires sans frontières, the military without a border, riffing on the real life medicine sans frontières. This plays into the boss's goal of a world yeah. being united as Snake can help without borders. anyone and fight for anyone, despite the political division of the Cold War and his past in the American Armed Forces. At the start of the game, the KGB come to you and ask you to help fight the CIA in Costa Rica. They get that kind of cash. I fear La Cia may be involved. The CIA. As you both know, the United States views Central America as its backyard. I understand that you and your men have neither state nor ideology, that you will fight any foe. While at the same time, the CIA were also infiltrating Nicaragua and helping their government fight the socialist Sandinistas while developing their own secret project in the jungle. And I feel it is a dynamic of this game that best shows Kojima's politics. Your main allies in the fight against America and the CIA are your second in command, Japanese American Kazuhiro Miller, and two members of the Sandinistas, Chico and Amanda. If you do not know the context, the Sandinistas were socialist revolutionaries fighting the US backed dictator in Nicaragua. General Somoza. Through cassette tape conversations between Snake and Chico and Amanda, you learn about their historic struggle and how America have always been crushing them. Since it was founded, my country has not once been able to choose its own path. First Spain, then America. Over 100 years of this. I know. In the 19th century, an American mercenary named William Walker seized power in Nicaragua. I'd heard he exploited rivalries between the political parties. Even after we expelled him, the Americans sent in their marines under the pretext of quelling political unrest. And the real reason? To intimidate the government and thwart the construction of the Nicaragua Canal. I thought the U.S. already has the rights to build a canal in Nicaragua. They never intended to build a canal there. They'd already started digging in Panama. A canal in Nicaragua would break up the Panama Canal's monopoly. Reason enough for America to stick its nose into our affairs. They snagged the rights so nobody else could build there. It was General Sandino who finally stood up to Los Yankees. General Sandino waged a guerrilla war against the Marines, at last driving them out. He was a true hero, and to us Sandinistas, like a father. But when they pulled out, the Americans left us something to remember them by. The National Guard. Yes, La Guardia. In name, a peacekeeping force. But in reality, Commander Somoza's personal army answering to no one else. In real life, Los the Sandinistas eventually toppled the Somoza regime in 1979, but it's extremely telling that Kojima firmly puts you on their side and educates you on their struggle. While not strictly showing Kojima's politics, I feel Kaz being one of the only Japanese characters in the franchise is Kojima inserting part of his life directly into the story. Kaz is a child of an American Marine who was stationed in Japan after the Second World War and had a relationship with a Japanese prostitute before returning to the US. March 10th, 1945. 381,300 cluster bombs were dropped on Tokyo. Japanese houses at the time were almost all made of wood. In that single day, a third of Tokyo burned to the ground. My mom lost her family and home in that raid. She had to move to Yokosuka and live with her cousin. 
The B-29s kept on coming, raising other major cities throughout Japan without mercy. Then, in August, they dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and Japan surrendered to the United States at last. After that, Yokosuka was flooded with American soldiers come to occupy the country. My mother was still in her mid-teens, and she learned from her cousin how to survive in that town, by servicing the troops. That's how she met my father, and how I was born. I'm talking to Cavernacle, and he said uh, he got a lot of uh, hate online for, for making this video, apparently. Which is crazy. Just like Kaji Dude, thinking that Metal Gear Solid is like not social thinking that Metal Gear Solid is not socialist is so fucking stupid, dude. Like it, it, like even I even get the One Piece thing where it's like, oh, it's just Gunman having fun, or like, oh, he's an anarchist. Like that's not technically socialist or whatever. But like, this is just so very openly. Like I don't understand. It's, it's so openly not subtle at all. Jima was Kaz is largely raised by his mother helping her run a local shop that had a lot of American servicemen as its clients. Kaz is also your way into learning about the history and setup of Japan. It seems Kojima believes that Japan's anti-military constitution and leading the world against nuclear weapons is the right course of action. Kaz helps educate the player on Japan's non-aggression pact that is set out in its post-war constitution and compares it to Costa Rica's who also got rid of its army. You were saying Japan has a peace constitution too. Yep. Japan renounced war in Article 9 of its constitution, aspiring sincerely to an international peace based on justice and order. The Japanese people forever renounce war as a sovereign right of the nation and the threat or use of force as a means of settling international disputes. In order to accomplish the aim of the preceding paragraph, Land, sea, and air forces, as well as other war potential, will never be maintained. Costa Rica is in a similar situation. So, the countries with peace constitutions end up having to rely on other countries' armies. Kind of ironic. In part of Kojima's anti-nuke stance, Kaz and Snape discuss both Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it is clear this is where Hideo Kojima's admiration for Che Guevara begins. Che Guevara actually has a link to Japan and its nuclear past. Che visited Hiroshima in 1959 after the Cuban Revolution. He was told he wasn't allowed to visit, but broke away from his tour group and took photos of the city. The year the Cuban Revolution was won, Che visited Japan as a member of an economic delegation. While he was there, he visited Hiroshima. Hiroshima. Since he was there to discuss economic issues, Hiroshima wasn't part of the original itinerary. Some said the Ministry of Foreign Affairs didn't want to let him go, but he went anyway. He visited the Peace Memorial Museum and the Atomic Bomb Survivors Hospital. Apparently, it gave him quite a shock. As a doctor, it must have been painful for him to see how the victims suffered. He was quoted as saying, They put you through this. And still you do whatever America said. So I'm not trying to say that, oh, you say America bad, but Japan also bad at all. But I was wondering if Kojima had worked in some of the things that Japan had done in the past. Would that go over well with fans in Japan? Or would they act similar to how Chuds do when you criticize America? Japan is a hyper-nationalistic country, so it well, probably would be not allowed to even be released, I assume. Or... Uh, across the board more of an indifference possibly due to america's already uh america's hegemonic status so people are way more comfortable shitting on america i would say whereas um like in japan or even in turkey it's not even like in turkey they will like i'll, I'll give you one example American patriotism is, is weird and, and shitty and whatever, but, like, in America, people wear, like, Turk... Uh, people wear American flag underwear. You know what I mean? That's unimaginable. Like, in, in a country like Turkey, for example, you actually have a fucking flag code. You know what I mean? Where, like, if, if someone were to... 
if someone were to like take a Turkish flag down and like step on it, people have been killed before for doing such a thing. That is the level of nationalism that is seen as like the norm in Turkey. America has a flag code too, but just no one gives a shit. You know what I mean? Because America's real ideology isn't even America. It's just capitalism. Yeah, the thin blue line would not be allowed. Like, the first time I saw someone violate the flag code egregiously was the Turkish flag guy who, like, on TikTok. Those words really hit me hard. Especially when I think of my mom. He said something else, too. Let us all love Hiroshima and its people. I can believe it. In a postcard he sent to his second wife from the city, he wrote, in order to fight better for peace, one must look at Hiroshima. This could explain Kojima's initial attraction to Guevara, but it is clear he has immense admiration for the man. Snake is constantly mistaken for Shay, despite Shay dying in 1967. Guinness, the chance, the way, what do we do? I was shocked the first time I saw you. You look so much like him. It's so sick. I look like El Che, huh? Sort of. Not in the face. It's more the way you carry yourself. Through cassette tape conversations with both the Sandinista, Amanda, and your friend Kaz, the life and philosophy of Che is told to the audience. Even his love of the famous Argentine drink, Mate. I wonder if Che and his men ever sat around. I wonder if that's the reason why Oda loves Che too, because of the Hiroshima thing. I, I didn't even, I did not know that uh, Che Guevara went to Hiroshima. ...and drank mate. I bet they did. Che was famous for his love of the stuff. Oh, man, whoever thought of this was a genius. You can put it in a gourd and carry it around, and there's a special straw with a filter attached so you can drink it any time. Snake, Cars, and Amanda hold Che in absolute reverence and discuss how much they admire his struggle they're in like, Cuba. They're so like I hear che Amanda weaves. mistook you for Che Guevara, Snake. That's not too bad, huh? Yeah, right. I'm not even worthy of polishing his boots. Don't be so modest. From where I'm standing, your men see you as a great man. <laughs> As great as the century's most complete human being. That's Sartre, right? Well, there's hardly been a more iconic figure of his times than Che. Oh, he was more than that. He was a true revolutionary and a great warrior. I'm with you there. Can you believe that when he first went to Cuba with Fidel, they had only 12 guys with them? But they rallied. They brought in new recruits, won the support of the peasants, expanded their organization. And in the end... They overthrew the Batista regime. I guess Che... I wonder what this guy's politics are, the guy, the guy who made this video game. I'm having a hard time fully grasping what Hideo Kojima's politics are like. This seems like a very apolitical game, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to get ahead of myself and make any inferences here, okay? I think it's unclear... Like, I mean, it would be relief, but I, I mean, I don't of know. Of course. The I mean, it's actually not a bad question, I, I, but like, I think about it like Turkey. Um, Japan and Turkey are hyper-nationalistic countries in their own different ways, right? And uh, when I compare Turkish nationalism, it's like Turkish nationalism is the norm, and then you have ultra-nationalism that's just like straight fascist. And I would say uh, Japan is similar to that. Where it's uh, like motherfuckers a nationalistic who, who, sentiment uh, is literally like just like seen as uh, the starting Fidel position. Castro and, and I mean Che Guevara like are bad. Way more than America. Are going to be like, wow. Americans are nationalistic. They're hyper nationalistic. <laughs> there's ultra nationalists. They're fascists or whatever. But in America, I didn't know Kojima was a tanky. I don't really like this. Here, no less. Times have changed, but the song remains the same. Patria libre o morir. That is our slogan. El Che used to say the same thing, you know. El Patria o muerte. The slogan of the Cuban Revolution. It is clear that Kojima's own politics is coming out of these characters' mouths. While Che is globally recognized as a revolutionary hero, he is still vilified by many in America, by both Americans and Cuban exiles and their descendants. You I wonder why the Cuban exiles just vilify Che so much. It's so strange. Could potentially say that because Snake, Cuz, and Amanda are soldiers in this time, it makes sense. 
But the detail they go into over Che, to me, shows Kojima does really personally admire him. Playing into my belief that Kojima is a socialist. There are many other things I could pick out from Peace Walker in particular. I'm surprised uh, no one has been like, Che, did you know Che Guevara was racist? Like, that's my favorite. That's my, that's my favorite take. It's like right up there with, did you know Fidel Castro was homophobic and Che Guevara was racist? It's like, motherfucker, you go spend your last remaining years on earth trying to violently, through violent revolution, liberate African nations from colonial violence. And then we'll have a conversation of whether or not you think uh, someone has atoned for uh, writing some racist shit uh, when they were younger. You know what I mean? Or, uh, or, or even with Fidel Castro, who like quite literally apologized, whose country, who still follows in the spirit of Castro, uh, is infinitely better to LGBTQ rights than the United States of America. From Cecile talking about the 1968 riots in Paris, Strangelove talking about Alan Turing, or Huey talking about nuclear deterrence. However, like most of his individual games, there is simply too much to cover here. But I will tie this back to Kojima's anti-nuclear weapons theme. So as previously stated, a Metal Gear is essentially a bipedal mech with the ability to launch a nuke. Essentially, a nuclear tank. The games set in the past play with it a bit more, but the concept is relatively similar. Nuclear proliferation is a key issue in Peace Walker that carries over to Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. In the game, there is a big fear that local private militaries could start seeking out nukes and the nuclear arms race could become more localized. Phantom Pain's plot is far more focused with questions of language and colonialism, but the anti-nuclear one remains, but interestingly carries over to the multiplayer. Metal Gear Solid V's multiplayer sees everyone have their own mother base, which they will need to defend from attackers these bases can also gain nuclear weapons. You can invade other people's bases and either steal their nukes or destroy them. The seemingly impossible goal is that the online community will work together to destroy all nuclear weapons in the game. In fact, there have been entire subreddits dedicated to this aim. It's pretty amazing that Kojima has used his work to spread a message of anti-nuclear weapons and nuclear proliferation. Sadly, the near impossible goal was never reached, but Kojima did make a special cutscene for the event if it were to happen. It later leaked. Yeah, to be fair, Metal Gear Solid 5 is not like a full-blown uh, work. Uh, it's, it's like half of a game that they doubled up basically due to uh due to the obvious uh, at that point it was like it was very obvious that konami and kojima were not on good terms and konami was you know konami was basically working kojima we found out even later uh how how awful awful those conditions were but they were forcing him to keep making ip they um and and also were you know stopping him from uh, fully realizing his vision. It's really bad. Get ready to be body scanned as a cameo in Kojima's next game. I would literally fucking die. Are you joking? What do you what do you mean? I I would perish. I have I have added and replied to Kojima Sama many times. Oh wait, you can do that in the game now? Is that what they're gonna do? For that to like happen unironically, uh, I would have to be a super famous Hollywood guy because let's be real, um, Kojima is a bit of a star fucker for sure. He loves. He loves movies and he loves like actually famous Hollywood actors and not just like random fucking e celeb losers. The last nuke's been decommissioned. It's over, boss. I thought this day would never come. But while we can rejoice, we must never relax. The last nuke was deactivated. That is a fact. 
but the knowledge that built it is still out there. How long the world remains nuke-free is up to us. Will this moment persist? Or will human ambition cast us into the flames once more? Our duty is to pass on what we've learned to the next generation. The memories, the experiences, the sins. Only when our children show the wisdom not to forge new spears. Only then will we be truly triumphant. The shrine at the center of the cutscene is a tribute to the boss with her quote, We have no hope for tomorrow, but there is still hope for the future. Accompanied by a child soldier laying the white flowers associated with her next to the shrine. It also says that the day marks the end of the nuclear flame that was set alight in Japan in 1945. It is clear this is a vision Kojima wishes for the whole world. The cutscene goes on to talk about how many nukes there were in the time of the game and the steps Russia and the US both took to reduce them. However, he also states that the end of the Cold War didn't end nuclear weapons and the threat of a nuclear attack is still high as terrorists could potentially access the technology. He ends it with saying that as of 2015, there are still 16,000 nuclear warheads in the world. The whole ideological split between East and West, in the end, it's just a greedy scramble for wealth by the ruling classes. The Western bourgeois stand to lose everything if their countries go communist. After all, the communists want to abolish private property altogether. So the capitalist rulers desperately tried to halt the global spread of communism. Hence the phenomenon of red baiting. As I've already stated multiple times, Metal Gear games cover so many political topics and philosophical concepts, it is impossible to cover it in a single video. Even just focusing on the big boss games is a challenge. This video was about how Hideo Kojima is a socialist auteur, yet I left out his criticisms of... So, uh... You know, this is this work of art is not socialist or political in the same way that like Das Kapital is it. You know what I mean? And technically, there's truth to that matter. Uh, it's not political because, uh, you know, Das Kapital was just simply describing capitalism. You know what I mean? It's not one way or another. It's just what it is. You know what I mean? Kaya, stop fighting. Fighting the chair. Guantanamo Bay and Ground Zeroes, I left out the entire plot of Metal Gear Solid 5, which focuses on historical issues of how colonialism erases culture around the world, and I did not really touch Kojima's critique of the private military corporations. And yeah, this is like, it's so dense. It's so dense that like you would need to do multiple videos on the issue it's hard it's hard to do it on just like one aspect of his politics and and wrap it up neatly in a 30 minute video in under 30 minutes but like there's so much more uh -uh, stop biting stop biting the chair no kaya no stuff that you have to bite that's like literally things that you're allowed to bite and the military industrial complex. However, one thing is clear. Kojima's politics clearly lean in a socialist direction. Despite him never explicitly giving a political interview, through reading his games and the politics of our heroes, we can clearly see his politics on display. From his admiration of Che Guevara, the bosses push for a world without borders, snake fighting with socialist guerrillas against the CIA, and the general depiction of capitalism, colonialism, and war. It is clear Kojima is a socialist. The bombast and sheer insanity of the series has acted as a cover, whereby Kojima has become extremely popular with the gaming community, which by and large is toxic against progressive politics. Kojima being a relatively apolitical person in public probably also helps with this image. Death Stranding is- To be fair, even then he's not really, cause like, there are plenty of fucking... I mean, there's like, uh... There's this, obviously. I mean, that's... There's, like, the, the obvious glazing of Che Guevara regularly, but, like... 
You know, there's a lot. That's not political. This is a cool hat. Yeah, who amongst us doesn't love uh, Ushanka's? Kaya, go. Kaya, get. Get. Kaya. Okay, I said get, and she just sat her ass down. Hideo Kojima, sir, take it off. You don't know what you, you don't know what that is, sir. Imagine gamers' reaction when they see the man whose games of some of the most blatant anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist messages might be sympathetic to the left, but they never realize because they don't understand subtext. But it's not even subtext. The funniest part about it is that, like, it's not even subtext. It's not. It's quite literally... It, it, I don't know how to describe... It's just text. It's just text. It is the equivalent. His video games are the equivalent of like, I hate imperialism and colonialism and endless war, which America is doing, even though they also look very cool while they're doing it. It's like... It is... It is quite literally... It is ham-fisted. It's ham-fisted in the way that... It's deliberately ham-fisted. That's the point. It's not even like a plot that is supposed to it's it's deliberately not subtle. It's supposed to be a it is supposed to be kind of cheesy. You know what I mean? It is supposed to be like an action movie. It's supposed to be cheesy. It's like done the, the storytelling is done in that way deliberately. It, it is camp. Oh, my God. Are they dead at There's seven? There's only two women. There's a women's bathroom. <laughs> hit, hit the women's. The women's is good. Not at the park, man. It's scary enough. He, he pulls it off. We are still in this? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I heard that. I bet it didn't. <laughs> Did that alleviate? They're done. They're cooked. Slime's basically at his limit. I can go a little more. I'm physically at my limit. I'm not. This might, this might have to be a. This might have to be a Shaq and Kobe. Uh, I think Shaq fuck. and Kobe. We check. I think this is a really good strat. What? We go to Chris. I love that they're just like trying to cheat. Like they're just very openly, and deliberately trying to cheat. A Marxist reading of Death Stranding. Death Str Bro, this is, I don't know if I'm going to watch this. Seems a little sus. We got. Waiting to digest the food should be illegal. Not necessarily because they're cooked. Digestion takes much longer than you think. ...is coming out this month, and it will be interesting to see how his political message progresses and evolves in his new game. But it is clear Kojima is one of the most prominent socialist game makers, and he has tackled some of the most serious topics the world currently faces. Bro, I'm definitely not watching this. Is this video a psyop by Marxism Today? 28 uh, minutes long. Dangerous misinformation on how to blow up a pipeline. Okay, some of you motherfuckers. I haven't forgotten what you told me, boss. We have no tomorrow. But there's still hope for the future. In our struggle to survive the present, we push the future farther away. Will I see it in my lifetime? Probably not. Which means there's no time to waste. Someday the world will no longer need us. No need for the gun or the hand to pull the trigger. I have to drive out this demon inside me. Build a better future. That's what I... What we... will leave as our legacy. Another mission, right boss?
That was great. The evolution, death, and resurrection of Metal Gear. Che Guevara, doctor, revolutionary, murderer. What the fuck? <laughs> 